Hey, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're going to be doing an S54 Vanos rebuild, including replacing the exhaust sprocket, which is a common failure point on this engine. And I'm going to take you guys through step by step to show you how you can do this at home. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So in front of me here, we have all the tools as well as the parts that we're gonna be replacing today. And you can see I already have the valve cover removed here. That's because we removed it in the previous episode. So I'll put a link to that video up here if you need help, as well as doing a valve adjustment on this motor. But now you see that we've got a timing tool out, which is gonna be required for this because we're gonna be messing with the Vanos and the timing. And you can also see that we're gonna be installing an upgraded exhaust sprocket from VAC Motorsports. And that's going to replace the factory one, which which is known to fail in this motor. Now, here you'll see all the Vano seals that we have to replace for the pistons, plungers, and then a couple of crush washers for the Vanos pressure line. And then we have a couple of O-rings for the sealing plate, but unfortunately I'm missing one of the O-rings here. So we're not gonna be able to replace all them today. We'll have to do that at another time, but I'll show you how these seals are replaced because it's gonna save you money rather than buying that whole gasket. And then speaking of gaskets, we have the Vanos gasket right there, and that's all that we're gonna need for today. So our first step is gonna be removing this Vanos unit itself, but in order to do that, we need to get the crankshaft at top dead center and then the camshafts locked out as well. So let's go ahead and take care of that first. So we've got the engine at top dead center and you can see I was even able to put a pin in there, actually the proper BMW tool. And so that locks the crankshaft so it cannot even move. The next thing technically would be to lock out the camshafts, but in order to make that a lot easier on us, we're gonna go ahead and remove the electrical module and the manifold for the Vanos. And that's gonna release a lot of the oil pressure that's built up in the system, which is currently hindering the camshafts from moving very easily. So let's go ahead, disconnect the electrical connector on one side. Sometimes they have a zip tie on there you need to cut off. And then to get the manifold off, there's gonna be five bolts, one, two, three, four, and five. And those hold the manifold from up top. So let's go ahead and remove that manifold. Now this is also the perfect time to break loose the oil restrictor valve that's on the side of the Vanos here. And now once we've done that, we can go ahead and remove the manifold. Now right here, I'm using a 24 millimeter open-ended wrench to rock the camshaft back and forth, and that is going to push the Vanos plunger forward. You see a little bit of oil coming out there and allow us to put the car into top dead center timing. So as you can see, we were able to get that manifold off and adjust the camshafts so that we could put our timing tool on and make sure that the camshafts are at top dead center, just like the crankshaft. And you wanna make sure that when you get this top dead center position, in order to confirm that it's correct, you're gonna have the camshafts from cylinder one pointed inwards and towards each other at about 45 degrees. And like I said, we've adjusted the camshafts to make sure that they're hundred percent in line here. This is my friend's timing tool that I'm borrowing, but I'll put a link to one that you guys can find on Amazon for $100 in the description. Real nice tool. This one's kind of been used and abused, but it's gonna do the job for us today. So what we can do now is remove the oil line up here and there's a 10 millimeter underneath my rags here. I'll probably try to show it to you there. And we're gonna loosen that as well so we can get this oil line out of the way. And we have two 10 millimeters on either side of the Vanos unit and then some five millimeter Allen bolts, three of them underneath. And that is going to allow us to get the Vanos unit off of the block, but then we're still gonna have to detach them from the splined hubs that go to the camshaft. So I'll show you that in a second, but for now let's go ahead and remove the Vanos.
Vanos is pulled off. I've got a couple of the spare bolts to hold it up and kind of support some of the weight. These were actually the bolts that were holding the manifold before and they're the same thread so it makes it really easy. And you can see we got a little bit of movement in this thing. You wanna move it back as much as possible to show the helical gears here and the Vanos plunger, which is still inside the unit here. What we need to do is disconnect these shafts that hold the gear to the plunger on both sides. And that's a seven millimeter on the gear and a 10 millimeter nut on the plunger. And it is reverse thread. So to break it loose, you're gonna be turning the nut, the larger nut, clockwise. So go ahead and watch me do that. Once we get these both separated, we can remove the Vanos module and work on it at the bench. So we've got our Venus now on the table and split into two pieces so we can service it a little more easily. We're gonna clean up the manifold in a minute, but for now let's go ahead and start replacing the seals here in this main component. The first and easiest one that we can do is gonna be the two seals for this uh, oil, I think it's an oil drain tube right here. We're gonna go ahead and remove it and then replace the seals. And then on the back side, we're gonna remove the three bolts that are behind the plungers and these have seals on the caps here. And then we're gonna pull the plungers out and replace those as well. And those have a special combination of Teflon ring and rubber O-ring. So I'll show you guys how to replace that in a minute. But let's go ahead and get to work. So you saw I removed the plungers. That wasn't too difficult at all. And the caps here, they have those large O-rings, which we have replacements for. And then these here, these are the plungers that have a Teflon ring, which is that flat. It looks like an O-ring, but really it's made out of Teflon. And then a Viton, or basically like a rubber O-ring underneath it. So in order to replace these, you actually have to cut them out because you know they're pretty solid. They're hard to get under. So we're gonna cut them out and then install the new ones. And then the instructions online tell us to just try to fit them in here to get them uh, closed off because a lot of times since you're stretching that Teflon seal to get it on the plunger, it's not going to fit in here on its own anymore. So you really do have to compress it before the final installation. And there are a couple of seals at the back of the module here, right on this side. So there's one more O-ring and then Teflon seal around the inside. So a total of four, which you can see here in the kit. And I've already gone and put the corresponding O-ring to the Teflon seal. And that makes it easy to remember which ones are gonna get paired together. So let's go ahead, I'll show you guys as best I can replacing the seals, and then we'll have to reassemble this whole thing, and then we'll move to the manifold. Now removing the old seals is simple because you're essentially just cutting and destroying them to get them out of the piston. But installing the new seals is gonna be really tricky. So first of all, you wanna make sure that you have the right sized O-ring and Teflon seal for your application. 
and then the o-ring is gonna stretch over pretty easily just be real patient because you don't want to tear it in half but then the teflon ring is gonna be really tricky and what i learned to do was using a pick i was able to kind of stretch it out and then once I stretched it enough, I kind of pulled it off of the plunger here and reinstalled it upside down and it was able to slide down the shaft, just working it down really slowly and gently until it fit into the groove perfectly. And I know that it looks a little bit stretched right now, but we're gonna fix that in a minute. Now this last seal inside of the Venus module itself, it can be pretty tricky, but once you're able to get out both the Teflon seal and the Vidon O-ring, you're gonna clean out that passage in there and then you can go ahead and install the new stuff. So the O-ring is pretty simple, although I ended up using some picks to kind of just push it and nudge it into place. And then the Teflon ring was a little more tricky. You actually have to bend this thing in half very gently in order to get it into the groove here. And then once you do install the piston later, it's gonna smooth out that fold, but it is a little bit sketchy when you do it, trust me. So with all these seals replaced, we can go ahead and reinstall the plungers. And like I said, you'll notice that these O-rings, they're a little bit too big to just go in easily. So you're gonna have to spend some time and you see I have it in the backwards position right now, but I'm just trying to get the O-ring to compress. So once I've got it in that sleeve there, they recommend from Bazin Systems or Bison Systems, however you pronounce them, they recommend putting the plunger in the tube, letting it sit for about a minute so that the Teflon seal can constrict and do the same thing on both of them this one you know the seal inside of there it's gonna be pretty easy because this has like a chamfered edge on the plunger here so it's gonna get inserted pretty easily but the one that is the hardest to get compressed is this small ring on the plunger for whatever side this is I think the exhaust side so a good trick to use in this case is to grab a hose clamp and you can actually tighten it around that seal and it'll do the job of compressing it. Do that for a couple minutes and then you'll be able to insert this into the Venus there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. We'll reassemble this and then move forward to replacing the seals for the manifold.
we replaced the o-rings that are on this oil restrictor right here in the side of the manifold and i also removed this coil pack is what it's called because basically it magnetizes these receptors here and that opens and closes different valves in this manifold so if we go ahead and grab a magnet we can actually put it up to these and open the valve and you can hear it close a little click there not sure if you guys can hear that but by opening the valve we can clean out these passages and this is kind of not necessary but we're going to do it anyways to make sure that we get out all that old oil and it'll also clean out all the gunk and uh, oil leaking i guess from this manifold here so let's go ahead and clean this thing out and then we'll worry about replacing the exhaust sprocket on the vanos So before we move on to the exhaust sprocket, I just want to show you guys, we have the manifold assembled here, cleaned up. And like I said, we don't have all the O-rings to replace the seals in this panel gasket here. I only have three of them, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the procedures from online, which are really helpful. Basically, you're just going to be cutting out the plastic from this and replacing them with O-rings, which of course you kind of have to balance on the manifold once you do get to installing it, but it does save you a lot of money versus trying to find this piece from BMW. So we'll hold off on replacing these. We'll just put this on there for now. And now let's go ahead and talk about this exhaust sprocket. So this is reinforced and the factory one is not. Now the problem that you would see sometimes is that these tabs here, which are made to grab the oil pump gear in the Venus mechanism, these can break off. And when both of these break off, you know, well, first of all, they can fall into the motor oil pan, which is not good. But when they both break off, then you don't get any Venus oil pressure and you won't have a working Venus mechanism. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it by loosening and removing these 10 millimeter bolts here. We're gonna loosen them first so we can pull out this helical gear it's called and we're gonna make sure to see that it's installed at the exact same position which you can see the teeth are a little bit recessed into the hub here. So we'll go ahead and remove this first take the exhaust sprocket off. There are some plates behind it built into the sprocket. We need to transfer over to the new one and then reinstall everything. And then we can get to putting the Venus mechanism back on and then getting the valve cover back on so we can start up the motor. So let's go ahead and replace this now. Keep in mind, since we have the timing chain tensioner still installed, the gears should not go anywhere. So we don't have to touch anything else. Essentially, we don't have to touch the timing chain and we'll just replace the sprocket here. So let's go ahead and get to work. Now, before I pull off this exhaust sprocket, I did want to remind you guys that the orientation is super important. Look at mine here. You can see that the dowel hole, which is used to time from factory, the Venos, uh, that's pointed right here around the bend where the bend starts for the chain. And these two forks for the exhaust sprocket, these are currently exactly horizontal. So that is the orientation that you're going to want to install the new sprocket in. I'm going to go ahead and get this last bolt off here. And now we should be able to remove this and there's going to be some hardware behind there. So you don't want it to fall out. I'm going to go ahead and grab some paper towels here and use both my hands to get this off. Then we'll go to the bench.
So definitely pay orientation to these plates here as you're changing them. You'll see that this outer one here, it's got a wear groove from the oil staining from the inner one. So it's pretty easy to tell what the orientation is for that one. But I think that there's even like an update from BMW, at least for the S62 on the orientation that you could put these in. But that's not the case here. So we're just going to go ahead and mimic the exact orientation. Say it one more time. There you go. And now this is installed and we're ready to install. Nothing is left in here. No more plates or anything. So we can go ahead and install this to the camshaft now and we'll reinstall using all the previous bolts as well. Torque those down to 10 Newton meters and then we'll start reinstalling the Venus. Now, one thing about doing the Venus procedure on these cars is that you have to figure out which is the first tooth for this helical gear to go into the sprocket. So if you're not familiar, go ahead and read up on this. It's in the procedures. And once you understand it, you understand it, but you wanna make sure that you get that first tooth for the helical gear before you install it so you get full actuation of the Venus. And now we can go ahead and proceed with installing the rest of the components for the Venus. It's just gonna be reverse order as when we installed it. And remember to get the sprocket forks onto the oil pump for the Venus so that it lines up and it, and it mates well. But otherwise, it's very simple to get the valve cover back on. And then in a second, we'll have the car started and driving.
So now you guys know what time it is. It's time to get this engine started. And now since we completely drained the oil out of the Venus unit, it is gonna take a second to get oil pressure up there and adjust and then get to run smoothly. So don't be scared if it makes a little bit of a Venus rattle when you first start it up. But now let's go ahead and start it up and make sure that we did everything correctly. So there you have it, a successful Vanos rebuild, and it wasn't that difficult either, just a little bit time consuming. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link down in the description to this really nice website that has a detailed guide for this procedure. They also sell the seals in case you need to do this service yourself, but they have all the torque values there, step-by-step -step guide with pictures. So I'd recommend you guys check them out for more information on this job. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below for me. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe to the channel if if you're new and you have it yet. As always, I hope everyone has an amazing day and we will see you in the next video.